Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to learn what a sprite render is and what it's used for. Let's begin. A sprite render is the main way to display 2D sprites in your game. So let's begin by making a new game object, and let's name this our sprite. And in here, let's add a component, and it will be the sprite render component. So here you can view all the fields of the sprite render. First of all, you have the sprite, which is the visual texture that is actually displayed. As you can see, if you don't apply a sprite, then nothing is actually displayed. You can see that our game object is in here and nothing is visible. So let's go into the textures folder to apply a sprite. So in here, you can see that I have a spaceship sprite. And when you import a texture into Unity, you can see the import type up here. This texture is a simple PNG file, and when imported, you can see that Unity automatically selected the texture type to be a sprite that you can use in 2D or in the UI. This is what you need to have selected in order to use the sprite in the sprite render. So back in our sprite render, let's go in there, we can drag our spaceship sprite into our sprite field. And now, as you can see, it is visible on the scene window. For the size of the sprite, let's go back to the texture import settings. So in here on the spaceship, you have a pixels per unit field. That means how many pixels in the sprite will equal one unit in your scene. Down here, you can view the size of the sprite. In this case, it is 64 by 64. And if we go up here and set the pixels per unit to be 64 and hit apply, you can see that the sprite has been resized and now occupies one unit by one unit. You can see it matches perfectly. It is occupying one unit. So if you go in here, essentially that converts 64 pixels in the width into one unit and 64 in the height into also one unit. Always keep the size in mind when drawing and importing new sprites. So that's the sprite field. Now let's go into our sprite. Again, check out the sprite render. So here's our spaceship as our sprite, and then we have the color field. This is the color tint that will be applied to the sprite. So the spaceship is red, but using the color field, I can tint it in various colors. So like that, tint it about a blue. As you can see, it is a tint which multiplies the colors of the spaceship. One thing that I always have in my games that is always very useful is a simple white pixel texture that you can see down here. It is literally just a one by one white pixel. Since again, if we delete the sprite in here, so let's duplicate this one and delete the sprite. And you can see that on the second game object, we have nothing visible. If you don't apply a sprite, then nothing shows up. So by having a simple white pixel in your project, you can use it whenever you want to display a rectangle. And since the sprite is in white, you can easily tint it to any color. This is extremely useful anytime you need a tinted rectangle for anything in your game, like for example, for a health bar. Just do it, set the correct size, and there you go. You got a makeshift health bar right there. So back in the sprite render, up next you have the flip, which very simply flips the texture in the X axis or in the Y axis. Very simple and can be useful in your game. Then we have the material. The material is for more advanced uses for your sprite. Chances are, for the most part, you want to use the regular material and just display a simple sprite. Using a custom material allows you to use custom shaders. The shaders will work the same as with a mesh, except if the shader has a texture, then it will be ignored and use the sprite as the texture instead. But again, for the most part, you'll simply use the default. Then we have the draw mode, which you can set to simple, sliced, or tiled. Simple simply displays the sprite as normal, as you've seen. And then we have sliced, which first of all, you can see a warning in here. If you're using sliced, you should set the sprite import textures to use full rect. So let's go in here, instead of using a mesh type for tight, let's use full rect. And now when using sliced, essentially you can go to the sprite editor and slice the texture in here. So instead of using the whole spaceship, let's just use this part in here. Just like that, let's only display the middle of the spaceship. And now when you check out, as you can see, it shows only the middle of our spaceship. So if you set to simple, it displays the entire sprite. If you set to sliced, it only displays that slice. And finally, we have tiled, which lets you tile a sprite multiple times. As you can see, you change the width and height in here, and the sprite gets tiled correctly. Yep, there you go. 
So after the draw mode, you have the sorting layer and the order in layer. This is how you define which sprites are on top of which. A sprite on order of 1 will show up on top of a sprite on order of 0. So let's duplicate our spaceship, put another one in there, and let's tint this one so we can see both of them right there, okay? So there you go, we have our red sprite, and let's put it on 2, and as you can see it is on top of the other one, which is on 1. So a higher order in layer will show up on top of a lower order in layer. You can also add your own sorting layers by going in here and click add sorting layer. In here you view all the sorting layers. So let's make a background layer, new layer, name it background. And now let's drag it on top of the default. Again, the order in here is the order in which the objects are rendered. That means the sprite that has the background sorting layer will be rendered before the sprites on the default layer. So the sprites on the default layer will show up on top of the ones on the background. Usually it's helpful to have a bunch of layers for the usual things in your game, so at least a background default and then another layer, and let's name it over. Back in our sprite renderer, the order is applied after the layer. So in here, let's put this one on minus 10, which as you can see is under the other spaceship. But now if I set the sorting layer to be on over, you can see that it is on top. The order is minus 10, whereas this one has an order of zero, so it has a higher order, but it is on the default sorting layer, whereas this one is on the over. So no matter what number I put in here, this one will always be on top of the other one, since it is on a layer that is rendered on top of the other one. All right, so that's what we can do through the editor. Now let's check out the code. So let's go in here and make a new C Sharp script, and let's name it Test Sprite Renderer. Let's apply it to our first spaceship and let's check out the code. So inside, let's first grab a reference to our sprite render. We do that by setting a variable for the sprite renderer and doing game object .get component of type sprite render. Let's do a debug.log just to make sure we're grabbing the reference correctly. So debug.log of the sprite render. Yep, as you can see in the console, we are correctly grabbing the sprite render, okay? Now we can change the sprite through code. So let's go up here and add a public field for a sprite and let's say burger sprite. And through code, we're going to go down here and do sprite renderer dot sprite equals our burger sprite. So let's go back into the editor and drag the burger sprite into our field and run the code. Yep, there you go. Our spaceship has now converted into a burger through code. Then we can also change the color tint. So let's go into the sprite renderer and set the color to a new color and let's put it on red. So one, zero, zero. And let's see the color. There you go, it's a burger and tinted in red. Another thing we can do is add transparency. So in here, let's set the alpha to 0.5F. Essentially, it will be half transparent. So let's see. Yep, there you go, a red tinted burger, half transparent. So now let's create a new sprite through code. So down here, let's make a game object, burger game object, and we're going to create a new game object, give it the name burger game object, and we're going to initialize the new game object with a sprite renderer component. Then we're going to go into the burger game object and get the component for our sprite renderer and call it sprite renderer burger sprite renderer and set the sprite of this one to our burger sprite and remove it from up here. So we now should have two different game objects. Yep, there you go, there's the spaceship tinted and half transparent and then the new game object that we created through code. As you can see, it is down here, it has a sprite render with our sprite. So now let's check out the sorting order. As you can see, the newly created game object is on the sorting layer default with an order in layer of zero. So through code, let's set our initial sprite, our spaceship sprite, and in here we can set the sorting order to be, let's say, 10, and we can also change the sprite render dot sorting layer name, and let's give it the over layer, and do the same thing for this one down here, and instead of putting it on 10, let's put it on 20. So the burger sprite should be on top of the spaceship sprite and they should both be on this layer in here. And yep, there you go, got the burger sprite on top of the spaceship sprite and if we check out in the hierarchy and look in the inspector, you can see this one is indeed on the over layer with an order of 20 
and this one is on the overall layer with an order of 10. Just make sure you actually create the layer by going in here, add the layer in here so that you can use the string in your code. So there you have it. We covered what is a sprite render and all the ways we can modify it both in the editor and through code. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.